want to walk you through the construction process so far on a Spira International Caladesi Dory. I purchased the plans from Jeff Spira, who sadly passed away. Um, but I've been working on the boat for about a year and a half, off and on. And uh, this is my attempt to uh, document my progress so far and maybe uh, explain a few things along the way that might help other people who are interested in this kind of project. I'm going to start with the frame stations. Creating the frames for the boat was really quite simple. I used the provided drawings from Spira International to lay out each frame member on a sheet of plywood. I'd use the bottom edge of the plywood as the baseline for the frame and then drew a center line on the on the plywood and I was able to measure over uh, with the provided dimensions and mark out my four quadrants and then I simply took my, uh, my my lumber and I laid it up against those marks and I would scribe lines on the uh, on the board and then I would also scribe the boards against each other and that provided the angles that I needed to cut the frame members. The plans also provided dimensions for each frame station along the strong back. It really is quite amazing when you start laying out the frame members along each of the frame stations, the boat begins to take shape. But I don't know that I really had an idea for how big this boat would be until I skinned it with plywood. Next I took a scrap block from the chine log and the shear clamp and I was able to use that to scribe the, uh, the marks for the cutout that would be required in each one of the frame members. There were actually four uh, cutouts in each one of the frame members in addition to the center cutout uh, where the keelson would run uh, forward and aft on the boat. Cutting each and every one of the notches in the frame members was a tedious but necessary part of the building process. I didn't get to cheat and use power tools on this step. I actually found that my handsaw was the best tool to use uh, for cutting each and every one of those notches. One final step in the framing process is I had to fare the outside of the frame members to match the angle of the, uh, the bottom of the boat. Um, that way the plywood would sit flush with the, the chine log and the shear clamp. Then it was on to plywood. 
In all, for the hull, I used six pieces of half-inch Maranti marine-grade plywood and three pieces of three-quarter-inch fir plywood for the base of the boat. This was my first time using epoxy and fiberglass cloth. I ended up using uh, three layers of six ounce fiberglass cloth and two layers on the sides. Uh, I also reinforced uh, the corners with extra uh, fiberglass cloth and uh, it was there was quite a learning curve with the epoxy. Uh, one thing that nobody explained in any of the other videos that I, I hope can be a blessing to somebody else is uh, there's something called amine blush, which is a waxy surface that forms on the surface of the epoxy. I did way more sanding until I figured this out, that uh, you can actually cut that, um, that wax with uh, um, ammonia or some other cleaner, and uh, it makes the sanding process a lot easier. I actually ran short on epoxy on the last layer of fiberglass cloth on the bottom and I, I tried to uh, move it out and, and stretch it out as far as I could um, but it ended up being pretty bumpy um, so in addition to sanding I, uh, I mixed fumed silica with uh, epoxy uh, with the next batch of epoxy that I ordered and this makes a, a lightweight fairing compound that's a lot easier to sand than regular epoxy In addition to Total Boat Epoxy uh, 5 to 1, I used their uh, two-part epoxy primer and uh, it covered the boat very well and I think that's going to provide a very durable surface uh, under the paint. Then it was on to uh, uh, Rust-Oleum uh, topside paint that I used. Uh, since this boat is not going to stay in the water, um, it's going to be in and out uh, with every use. Uh, I used topside paint along the bottom and on the sides. I used Battleship Gray on the bottom and then the, uh, the sides are navy blue. Then it was on to flipping the boat. I used what I think is an unconventional approach. I actually built a box around the boat and uh, that way with little manpower we were able to flip it. My two boys are helping me here and we used the uh, incline of the, the driveway to help us and uh, I used a, a come along attached to my, uh, my Jeep um, step bars and uh, we were able to gently lower the boat onto the trailer. It worked really well. When it was time to cap the gunnels, I used some wood that was salvaged from a department store that had closed in this area of North Carolina. And uh, if you can help me identify this species of wood, that'd be great. It's very, very light and it kind of machines like fur. So that's what led me to believe that it might be some sort of uh, fur or spruce uh, board. But these were painted and when I uh, ran them through the planer, I was amazed at how wide and, and clear they were. So I thought it would be good, even though it was a soft wood, it would allow me to make the turn on the boat with, uh, with less uh, seams. For the rub rails and the caps on the back of the uh, boat, I used white oak that was left over from the frames. I actually purchased uh, 
a whole stack of white oak lumber from a local uh, bandsaw mill um, and uh, he gave it to me all for $300. I had to pick through it quite a bit, but uh, it's going to make a very strong uh, boat frame and, and some of the trim boards. Uh, for the, um, the softwood caps, I actually impregnated them with uh, epoxy. I'm hoping that that might make the, the, uh, the gunnel caps a little more durable. I ran into a unique problem when it came to uh, locating the scuppers at the bottom of the boat. Most uh, drain plugs are meant to uh, be drilled perpendicular to uh, the transom and, uh, and, and that way they'll seat flush. Well, I had to drill my holes uh, parallel with the bottom of the boat and uh, so here you see a recess that I routed out um, in order for the uh, drain plug uh, caps to, to seat uh, flush against the exterior of the boat. And here I am uh, uh, laying the, uh, the decking on the inside of the boat. And I actually used 2x8 and 2x10 material from the big box store and I picked through it. I'm sure they weren't too happy with me. <laughs> uh, but I got as many uh, pieces that had that quarter sawn look as, as I could and I just cut the pith out and used um, um, three, four, and five inch boards. I was able to take her out of the shop and down to the Cape Fear Wooden Boat Show a few weeks ago. I didn't win any awards but uh, it was really a pleasure to meet a lot of other wooden boat builders and enthusiasts and uh, man I just got to tell you it felt good to see people admire my hard work and uh, um, I hope to uh, do uh, some more videos so uh, be sure to like and, and subscribe uh, to my channel and you can see uh, follow-up videos of the launch and uh, completion of the interior. Uh, saving up for an outboard motor so that's uh, that's the next big project right now thank you for uh, checking this out